first setup you're going to do when you start with the NRP is that you're going to turn the outside diameter to a dimension on the drawing and that will fit on the inside of the aluminum piece and you want a sliding fit, not a real loose fit, just a good sliding fit between the two. And once you get that turned out, you'll turn a, about a three quarter inch section on the end of the black piece down to where it'll fit inside a piece of PVC. And the same operation, you will put a, the required drill bit off the drawing and you'll drill the inner part of that black housing to almost about three quarters of the way down. Uh, there's a dimension on the drawings you'll have to reference to, to get that depth. The next thing after you've completed that is you'll want to set that up in the mill and it doesn't matter where you position at this point in time, but that's when you'll locate where the one inch diameter bore hole is going to be and you'll locate it and then bore it to depth for the, the drum to fit in. In that same setup you can come out and drill that quarter inch hole which is 3 8 inch from the end and uh, that's going to be a, a place for a pin to hold that PVC on that section you've turned down earlier. After that you can take the vise that's on the mill and rotate it to approximately 45 degrees and then take a 3 16 extra long end mill and you probably want to use a, a carbide end mill because it is so long and then you'll take small strokes at a time and then cut that slot to the depth shown on the drawing and that will complete everything except this offset hole on the end. There you can uh, set that up in the milling machine, set that up and, and bore that hole to the dimensions shown. And that will complete the inner housing. With the drum, you take a piece of one inch Delrin and cut it to length, and then you'll want to cut a slot in it and that slot will be a quarter of an inch deep, deep and uh, about three quarters of an inch wide. So you do that with a, an end mill. And then while you've got it in that setup, you're gonna take and drill and tap the end of it, uh, 1032. So that'll hold the arm captive in there once you get that slot done. You'll use that slot to locate where you want the cavity to be placed in the drum. Tip it up 20 degrees, and then with the, a 3 8 end ball end mill, you'll start with the first part of it, and then with a specially sharpened drill bit to the angle shown on the drawing, you'll come and follow that, and that will get your cavity for your drum, for your seed drum. And these can be done this way. You can also do them with a Dremel to fit the seed characteristics that are in your area. Also, there's a urea drum, which everything else is the same, just the cavity is different, and it is just a, a slot in there. And you'll see that it, you take a, a ball end mill and you just cut a slot in that. And you can also do that with, by hand if you want to, to get the proper amount of urea that you want to go in your drum. That does the drum. Then to attach the, to the drum, you need to have an arm that'll make that thing rotate. And this arm is a piece of quarter inch plastic and it'll be cut on the end so that it fits in that slot of the drum with a hole drilled in it where you can put that 1032 screw in there. It also is gonna have a slot in it to, to go across a pin that's gonna be mounted in the outer housing. The outer housing is, is probably the simplest part. Basically, you take a one inch slot and put in one end of it and follow the dimensions on the drawings. You'll also, in that setup, you'll put a, a hole off to the side. That's just a locator hole for the aluminum pin that's gonna be placed in there. And then on the same end of that, you're gonna punch another quarter inch hole all the way through both sides 
and it's going to be 3 8 inch of it from the end and that does that setup now you're not done with this because you still have to fabricate the pin and the pin is make it to the length shown and it's got a little angle to it and you can put a piece of something that's the same size as that Delrin in there and you'll place that pin down in there and get it vertical and then you're going to have to weld that in there with a TIG and that's aluminum welded and then that basically completes the outer housing. And another fairly complicated piece is, is the tip and it's got three components to it and this the first component is the piece of uh, metal that, that you have to turn a flange onto so you've got a piece that's basically two and a quarter inch OD and you're going to turn, the, uh, turn it down to within an eighth of an inch on the end down to where it slips inside that aluminum housing and it doesn't have to fit tight either. In fact, you don't want a tight fit. Um, it just needs to set in there and in that three eighths off of the end, you're gonna put another quarter inch hole and that's gonna actually be able to attach that to the aluminum housing. This is done with a piece of um, two inch schedule 160 pipe. Now, you don't, it's gonna be hard to get that, but you can also make this out of a solid piece or, or just anything fairly close or, or make it out of two pieces. But um, the reason it's got the flange is because that's gonna take the blunt of the blow when you force this into, into the earth and try to plant your seed. With this, it, there are two pieces of metal that are, are welded to it. And these are the tips and you can do these different ways, but you see on a video where they pressed um, a little bend in the longer piece, just about where the widest part of the tip is. You'll see on the drawing that, that this, uh, there's a flat pattern for that. So you can cut that out by hand if you want to. Same thing with the, uh, with the small section of it there, uh, metal too, that's gonna be welded on. And then it is also just pressed down and, and uh, bent to the same shape and the same radius as the other. And then I put those on and, and weld them together and, and that basically does the tip. First of all, you, you've got the, the outer housing and you want to actually take the, the tip and put it on first and you'll, you'll put the tip on the opposite end that the slot is on and pin it in place. One thing you'll have to come up with is a spring. Here's the specifications on the spring. You don't have to follow this exactly, but this gives you an idea of, of kind of what you need. And the important things are, if you see here, you'll see a spring rate of, of pounds per inch of nine, and that basically means that for every inch you push that, compress that spring, it takes nine pounds of force. What you'll wanna do is try to be around that nine pounds per inch spring force, and then you'll see down below, you'll see a, a free length of four and a quarter. You probably need to be around that so that you can, when you jab the hand planter in the ground, that it will go through its full rotation and allow the drum to pick up a seed and then when you pick it up, it'll drop it. The other important thing is the coil OD because the interior of the hand planter housing is two inches and so you need to stay under that too. So that 1.92 is of course under that and that allows that spring to move freely inside the housing. And you'll drop that spring in there inside the, the outer housing. Then you can take the inner housing for that slot, you'll need to have a brush, and the brush is a, a soft bristle brush, and cut this to approximately an inch long, uh, 25 millimeters approximately. The length of the bristle on this is about three quarters of an inch. So if it fits too loose in there, you may have to give it a little bit of a bend so it'll hold it captive. 
It's got two things that brush does. Number one, it keeps seed from just falling through the planter. Number two, it also helps singulate. You can take the inner housing and with the offset hole, stick it in first. And with the one inch hole in the same position as the one inch slot of the outer housing, you'll force it down and then you can drop the drum in. Put your pin in and that's your complete assembly. The one thing you need to make sure of though is, is that the PVC mounts to the end of that black piece where that's been turned down a little bit and when it, it either needs to hit on that PVC or hit on the drum, it, we don't want it bottoming out on, on anything else. It'll, we want this PVC basically to take the Okay, the force of the hit.